What's up guys, Jimmy here, and today I want to teach you how to do a crosscut DP. I've already done this tutorial for Street Fighter V, so if you've been around, this is going to be similar to that, but there are a lot of, like, key details that have changed, so let's talk about that. So I guess we should start with an explanation for beginners, what even is a crosscut DP? Why do we have a special name for it? Here's a recording of a common scenario that you're going to be facing, okay? You want to do a Shoryuken against this specific move right here. A cross-up attempt from a tight angle. And you want to punish it like this with a Shoryuken, okay? And uh, this is like, requires some practice. It's not an easy thing to do at all, and you need to understand that like, you can mash it out, but you, you're you not going to be consistent with it. So it's much, much better to learn the specific motion, so I'll show you right now. So in order to get the crosscut DP, you need to do something like a half circle input, but it's not quite a full half circle. If you paid attention to my inputs earlier, I always pressed the final attack on a down back input, and this is quite important. So effectively, you're trying to do something that looks like this. If you take a look, I do a forward, down, forward, down, down, back, light punch. Light punch, by the way, it's because it's the fastest Shoryuken that we can do. Also, side note, DPs in Street Fighter 6 compared to Street Fighter 5 and 4 are a lot slower, okay? So the light Shoryuken is actually exactly as fast as the slowest Shoryuken from Street Fighter 5. So keep this in mind, if you think, or if you've already done Street Fighter 5 crosscuts, they might appear more difficult in Street Fighter 6 because they are. You actually have a little bit less time to do them, so keep that in mind. Uh, the Light DP in Street Fighter 6, by the way, has anti-air capabilities, unlike the uh, Street Fighter 5 variant. You normally would have done a medium Shoryuken in Street Fighter 5, so in my previous tutorial, that's how we did it. In Street Fighter 6, you should be doing the Light Shoryuken, but you can do any Shoryuken. They can technically work, it's just the light DP is the one that is designed against aerial attacks, it has aerial uh, invincibility, so you should be using that for the most part. By the way, the reason why you're getting a Shoryuken when you're doing like a half circle motion, you might be looking at this input right here, and you're like, why does this even give me a Shoryuken? It's because we're trying to walk under the opponent when they're jumping over us, and we're holding forward, right? And the moment they're behind us, when we do a down into a down back input, the down back input actually gets corrected. Because the opponent is already behind us, it's going to be a down forward input. So technically you're doing forward, down, down forward punch, which is a Shoryuken input in Street Fighter 6. So this is the reason. Um, also, the reason why you don't want to end in a back input specifically is because it's going to cause your character model to stand up. If the opponent is doing an attack, like here, and you stand up... Well, it's actually difficult for me to, to show... Ah, there we go, I got it. You see that? I got hit here. And it's because if my character model stands up, before I do the, um, the attack, uh, I'm susceptible to, the, to these attacks. You know, if I'm crouching, I have a lot more time because the character model is crouching, so the attack that is coming from the opponent is going to hit at a later frame. This is going to give you valuable time, and you should absolutely use that time. It is much, much tighter to do the half circle, like the full half circle motion. Not recommended. Really learn to end in a down back when you're doing the cross cut. Also, keep in mind, if you're a beginner, this is not going to be easy to learn. It's definitely not the first thing that you should be worrying about when learning Street Fighter, but it is one of those techniques that is effectively necessary for high-level play. If you cannot uh, cover like a jump like this, then you have basically no chance of winning, because strong players are just going to figure out uh, how you play and that you have a weakness here, and they're going to exploit it. And they should be exploiting that, by the way. So really learn this one step by step just set up a training dummy just like i did all you have to do is have the training dummy perform a cross-up attack and try like from different uh angles and see how your success rate is 
Uh, once you master this in training mode, eventually you're gonna get really good at it in a real match as well. The first step is always when you're learning new tech, by the way, mastering it in training mode. When you're consistent with it in training mode, you're not gonna be consistent with it in a real match. In a real match, you're gonna have a lot of other variables to worry about, so don't worry about that. You're not gonna be good at it at first, but the more often you try, the more consistent you're gonna become. Also for Street Fighter 6, it's quite interesting uh, you do have a secondary option to cover these crosscuts. Uh, if you're a beginner specifically, this is a very cool option. You can just do a back fears. Now, this option has its own weaknesses, but as you can see, even from like these really tight angles, it'll still work. If I do a crouching fears, it will not work. So crouching fears does not cover this angle, but back fears will. So keep this in mind. It's another tool that Ryu has, I love to use this one specifically when people jump out of the corner because you can keep them cornered this way. The crosscut has the weakness of side swapping, obviously, and sometimes you want to prevent that. Weakness of the back fears, it's not as consistent as crosscut, so it trades sometimes, and sometimes you just flat out get beaten. It's not that easy to time as well, and uh, you also don't get pressure afterwards. So if you get the back fears, you effectively reset the neutral position. After a crosscut Shoryuken, you do get to pressure the opponent with a drive rush. So absolutely keep that in mind. Like this is this is a big swing, especially on high level. You will see every jump that gets punished with a crosscut DP is a big swing in the round. I guess the final thing that I can also talk about is canceling into a level three. This should also be practiced. It's a pretty valuable uh, way to do it, but not easy to do. Like, it requires you to have a uh, really tight DP, and also, and this is a major problem that you should also be working on, if the opponent, I have a separate recording here, if the opponent does not do an attack, it is much tighter to get. So if, if the opponent does this, let's see. I actually got it right there, nice. See, this can happen. If they don't do an attack, you gotta be really careful with that. So sometimes you'll get this weird moment where you think you got it and if the opponent had pressed a button, it would have worked, but the recovery is faster if they don't press a button. So keep this in mind, this really needs to be practiced. And especially if you're trying to do a level three afterwards, you gotta be particularly late, which makes it more risky as you can see here. That's all I have to say on the Crosscut TP. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you wanna see more, like and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much, take care, and I'll see you soon.